This is Tiger Cats post game on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Preseason takes, preseason gives away. That's how we're going to remember the 2022 Hamilton Tiger Cats preseason game. A pair of last second field goals. Uh, this one not going in the Tiger Cats' favor as the Toronto Argonauts win this one. 18 to 17, Louis B alongside Andy Fantuz on Tiger Cats post game from Alumni Stadium at the University of Guelph, where Andy, there's a lot to get into, not much to get into, hard to analyze a game like this. I mean, discipline late there didn't end up costing them um, in that situation, but still not something coach is going to be too happy about. You saw some flashes. Uh, you saw some questions maybe answered. What did you make of the uh, of what we just watched here at the University of Guelph? Well, it was uh, definitely an interesting finish. Um, the The wind became a big factor there in the kicking game. There was a there was a couple massive punts, um, and Boris Speedy ended up coming with the clutch field goal at the end. I I think there's a, a lot to learn from. Uh, you know, I I don't think it hurts to have two games down to the wire in the preseason to start to start it off so that uh, you know you're really ready for anything come regular season the uh, most popular guy on the field here probably played about one or two snaps is uh, getting a hero's welcome that's Jagarrett Davis waving to the crowd we didn't see a whole lot of him did see a lot of speedy B in the first half um, we'll get to that on Tiger Cats post game, still ahead. RJ brought in and Luke Tasker are going to join us on the uh, post game. We'll name our performer of the game. We'll talk to Coach O. Uh, but let's start by revisiting your Car Star keys to victory, Andy. Uh, as okay. uh, we we go back and check your your Car Star keys to victory, what'd you have for number one? Number one was uh, superb communication, and um, you know, kind of tough to give a grade on this, but I I didn't see a lot of dysfunction I guess uh, what, what you sometimes would see in preseason there was there was a delay a game uh, but not a lot of blunders I guess so yeah. so I, I gotta I gotta say that's a positive and uh, and give that a, a thumbs up yeah normally you would think to see uh, you know again more be more than one uh, time count violations we did see the one there but I thought they were for the most part disciplined. They were talking out there. They were pumping each other up. They were picking each other up, which is always great to see. Yeah, there was a lot of excitement after the plays. There was, uh, there was, like, everyone was aligned properly and seemed to uh, to execute the plays properly. So um, that's good to see. They definitely cleaned up from last week. Yeah. What'd you have for number two? Number two was play by play finish, and um, the physicality alone in this game was was outstanding. Uh, the the all the hits were violent and aggressive and uh you know these guys are good <laughs> they're gonna have some bruises after this game and and if that's the type of you know that's tie cat football right there and if that's the type of physicality they can bring week in and week out uh teams aren't going to want to play and 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 if it's eventually going to wear on them so you know i'm going to give another thumbs up to that one and for number three as always you win had the, win the turnover battle and uh tie cats Won that one as well, three to one. They had two, those two big interceptions and a turnover on downs, uh, and only threw the one pick. So, I guess my car start keys to victory are a little strange because I'm get, getting You're three out of three, and we <laughs> still lost the game. <laughs> in in <laughs> preseason, I mean, there, rules don't apply in preseason, as we've uh, come to know here. Um, I think there were a couple of things, a couple of questions that were answered. Want to get your thoughts on that? As uh, I, 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 I thought going into it, and this is why Steve Milton has been doing this job a lot more, a lot longer than I have and a lot better at it, because uh, Steve had said during the week, he's like, I don't think that there's a battle for number two. And I listened to uh, Courtney and Mike. They talked about it on Tiger Cats uh, game day. I was talking about it all week. I thought there was more, just based on what I saw from Jalen uh, in week one. Uh, very clear that there there was no battle for number two, but it certainly was a battle for number three today. And, and maybe with the performance that Jamie Newman had, made that decision maybe more difficult than they thought it was going to be. Yeah, I, I think, uh, think Jalen didn't help himself in this game coming off that that performance in week one uh, and Jamie certainly helped himself he he uh, you know he took a, a bit longer to catch on to the offense through training camp uh, from you know from an outsider view 
But tonight he was efficient. He was effective. Uh, he had a couple really nice balls. He was he went through his reads and he was able to extend some plays with his legs. He really he really did it all, and he looked um, you know he looked he looked confident yeah. out there, and and uh, so. Yeah, the, you never know. <laughs> no, I mean, and, and I, I think one thing that uh, I didn't really pick up on until the wind did pick up in the second half, especially the fourth quarter. But those two throws were into the wind in the third quarter, and he made them look easy. There was the one that was just out of reach that was called uh, uh, a holding or uh, offside, so they, it didn't count. But eight for eight for Jamie Newman for 88 yards and a touchdown, including a 34-yard bomb. To Johnson, so I I, I think that's going to be a really tough decision. And you know, Tommy is the quarterbacks coach and the offensive coordinator, so he's going to have to make a tough decision on that one. As is everybody, all the coaches. Is uh, coach told us earlier this week he doesn't see it's it's nothing out of ruthlessness. It's nothing, but they're going to make their decisions in the next 24 hours. Their cuts are going to come, and some guys' careers are going to come to an end. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. Uh, you, you only get so many opportunities, and, uh, and and for some people, and inevitably, it will be the last time they put on the helmet. Um, you know, coming from a guy who, you know, being out here, it's it's sad. I mean, I played I played a long time, but uh, that last time, you, oh, it's uh, how do, disappointing. How do, you, how do you, I mean, like, I don't want to say how do you sleep after, but like, a couple of guys are probably tossing and turning might not get a whole lot of shut eye tonight. Oh, I'm sure there's some nervous heads. Uh, that, that, that's that's without a doubt. And th these guys, they, they probably won't even watch the film as as a team because the the personnel department, the coaches, of course, will break it down. Uh, I think Luke mentioned it that they might take a handful of plays, good and bad, and 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 go through them next week. But it's all it's all about just. Uh, whether or not you're going to get that call from the Reaper in the next 24 hours, and uh, the Reaper meaning the person who cuts you, yeah. and uh, uh, and if, if not, then you know move over to Tim Hortons Field and get ready for Saskatchewan. Yeah, the Thai Cats next game is for real. It is uh, June 11th when they hit the road to face the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And of course, we'll have that game for you right here on the Thai Cats Audio Network. It was hard to get a read on the receivers, especially in the first half with Jalen Morton. Second half, we saw a lot more completions, the eight completions. But overall, I, I think there were only about 14 completions last week. There were 14 completions this week, so 28 catches to be had for the receivers, and that's a tough decision that's going to have to be made as well for those spots. Yeah, who jumped few, out at you? Sorry, to yeah, set up the no, question, who few, jumped out at you at the receiver group? Uh, you know what? I thought Tony Brown stepped up tonight. I, I I did. I thought he he got moved around to a few different positions. He started at the the F position, which is the third slot to the field, and he he got moved into the to the W, the two to the boundary, and made some really nice catches. He had a, a couple nice punt returns. That field goal return uh, that ended up getting negated because of a a costly penalty. But uh, he's one guy that I think you know um, increased his his. His odds uh, from tonight. Um, of course, Anthony Johnson had another big play. He's a guy that it's clear that the coaches and the quarterbacks and I guess everyone on the team likes. So um, I'd be surprised to see him let go. Um, and then other than that, it's really hard to to get a read on anybody tonight because it was they just couldn't really string any any first downs together. They couldn't really string any. Uh, any productive offense together. I mean, uh, Jamie had a couple nice drives, but even there, it was a lot of running the ball and a lot of uh, uh, so not much, not much to look at at the receivers. All right, here let's play a little game. Uh, concerned or unconcerned? Uh, Ty <laughs> Gats had nine first downs in that game. Concerned. Yeah. Yeah. This is two weeks in a row. Not a ton of productive offense, um, but it's preseason. I yeah. Mean, I mean, you, it's, you it's, hard, much... it's hard to read into too much, and, and we appreciate you listening because we're trying to do that. <laughs> we're, we're trying to give an assessment of what we watch, but there's how fans watch this game, there's how we watch this game, and there's how the coaches watch this game, which yeah. is a lot different than 
the 18-17 we see on the score, then the nine first downs. Like, yeah, maybe they're a little concerned about that. Nine first downs, 40 offensive plays compared to the Argos' 70 offensive plays. So nearly doubling up on that. So uh, for more, let's get exclusive access to the coaching room. Time to check in with Coach O. Presented by Access Storage. Uh, Coach, again, we were just saying we watched the game one way. You certainly watched that game the other. Uh, just your overall assessment from what you saw tonight. Well, I thought the guys played hard. I thought, uh, um, you know, our execution could have obviously been better, but I thought uh, we got some good evaluation out of it. Uh, you know, another CFL game and uh, could have been a little bit more disciplined down the stretch, but uh, I'm proud of everybody in the locker room. Yeah, you certainly have to be happy with the physicality. Uh, any, any time there was a tackle, it was it was a hard finish and, and tough-nosed football, and the special teams as well. Um, were you pleased with the turnaround in the punting units from week one? I thought we did. We hit the ball there. I hope, wish we could have placed the one a little bit better uh, rather than give up the point, but uh, I thought that uh, wind was a factor. I thought we handled it uh, pretty well. I thought the punting was definitely better. Uh, this week, but um, we still uh, we still got a, we still got a ways to go as a football team, not just as a punting team. Coach, your thoughts on uh, the quarterbacks tonight and uh, Jamie Newman and uh, Jalen Morton? Yeah, I thought that they, uh, you know, both of them were. Yeah, I thought they settled in. I thought they settled in. The games were different, uh, meaning there was a you know a different win factor in the second half. But I thought uh, Jamie came in there and threw a couple of great balls to keep the sticks moving to keep the field flipped. And I thought Jalen did some great things early on. Um, you know, he did have the, the one errant throw, but uh, I didn't coach a perfect game and there wasn't a player out there that didn't make a mistake. So, you know, I thought that they, uh, they did a good, decent job of managing the game. Yeah, Coach, uh, you know, I know you got a lot of tough decisions to make, you and your, uh, your executive, your front office and your coaches. So we'll let you go and make those decisions. Thanks for doing this. I'd probably rather stay on the call than do that. That's the least favorite part of the job. So, all right, guys. One time I'd rather stay on and talk to you right here. What do you mean the one all right. time? All right. Thanks, Coach. All right, guys. Have a great one. That is Coach and exclusive access to the coaching room presented by Access Storage. And, you know, he, he means it that – he, he hates that part of the job, and it, it does. Like, there are a lot of guys who aren't going to sleep well tonight, and the coaches among them who are going to be thinking. And the, the one thing about coaches and the one thing about cuts is you got to be sure, right, because these are guys' careers. This is your football team. You're setting yourself up for success. Yeah, it's it's so tough, and, and a, lot of, a lot of times they're going to be really unfair to the players because these are guys that that can play in this league and it's just a numbers game it's a and it's a it's a business and you know there's lots of factors involved um some decisions will be easier than others but it, it, it's tough i mean you, you you've you've been sort of a father figure for <laughs> for yeah. these guys for you know weeks now and really been a big part of, of each other's lives and to just uh to have to send them home yeah, and for especially not like there's going to be guys, I'm, I'm sure, and there's going to be a couple of cuts there that we're going to look back on and, and say, wow, right? And and that's the part of the job that that he that the coaches don't like, but it's all in pursuit of building a championship football team. And uh, some guys are going to go on and have great opportunities. We've seen guys get cut from uh, from camp and, and continue to have great careers elsewhere. Um, but it's all about the talent. And I are you... Uh, and I'll bring this question back when our roundtable guests, uh, RJ and Luke, join us uh, after we get our player interview. But are you, are, your assessment, are you, how are you feeling about the Ticats, you know, from before preseason to see, after seeing two games? What, what stands out to you? Well, I was certainly expecting more offensive production. And um, th that, you know, it's hard to know how conservative the play calling was, how you know, how much they really wanted to get into the rhythm versus yeah. holding back for next week. Uh, and, and of course, you know, without all your main guys, and that's offensive line, that's that's Don Jackson, Dane Evans, of course, and the, the star receivers returning from last year, um, it's going to be a totally different look next week. So it's, it's really not something you want to put too much focus on, but those numbers are pretty glaring, and uh, it, it's clear that, you know, without that big punt return, this game wouldn't have even been that close. Yeah, and the secondary for two weeks in a row, it felt like there were too many big plays given up on deep passes. Trevor Harris last week went 
uh, you know, had a great game, 150 plus yards. McLeod Bethel Thompson, again, against mostly the starters in the first half, 16 of 26 for 187 yards, that big play. And we talked about it, just how much the hash marks are affecting that secondary, trying to find that boundary spot or, or that, you know, that, that that's a, a Sam linebacker that we've seen. Uh, it, it's been interesting to see the secondary kind of try to find their feet, footing. Yeah, you can see that when they're dropping into – into zone coverage in the secondary that they're really getting some deep drops and leaving pretty large holes underneath. And, and any time the, the, the four-man pass rush does not get to the quarterback, then that's when they're finding those second-level throws uh, towards the sideline, around between the numbers and the sideline on those deep outs because they're so hard so hard to cover by a linebacker when the ball is, you know, so close to the middle of the field now with the hash is being different. So really you can go either way and it's such a wide space to cover those both those intermediate throws and those uh and those short zones. So, you know, they they're they plug those those short ones and then they and then they get one over the top of the first line of coverage. Yeah, and uh the punting back to that, I thought uh you know, with Blake Hayes being the starter, getting the first opportunity for the punts in the first half, I think he did put a little bit of pressure on Joel Whitford. And Coach mentioned it. There was the one in the uh, in the end zone. He wished he would have angled it a little bit better. Didn't seem to get all of his uh, his foot behind it and where he wanted it to go. But I thought Joel Whitford really responded well to a game where he needed to respond well as he finished the game. Six punts, averaged 48, including a long of 56, uh, three inside the 10 yard line that was a that was a good showing for Joel yeah <laughs> a couple of them had some fortunate bounces yeah. of course and and some aid by the wind but that you talk about tough decisions that punting that punter decision is going to be tough uh, I don't know if the fact Whitford was here last year and was you know yeah. hit and miss is going to help him or hurt him um, most likely the latter but but maybe they're going to keep both around for a bit longer. I'm not sure how that's going to play out, but it's uh, it, it's certainly one of those decisions that uh, I, I don't really have a feeling one way or another. And I got the sense, you know, Blake Hayes was their second uh, round pick in uh, this year's global draft. And, you know, around people I've talked to about that pick and about the draft, that was the guy they really liked. And I know they traded up uh, to get Bailey in the in the first round, but uh, I, I know that they're really excited about Hayes and, there's you talk about this there's practice roster that needs to be uh thought of you know we didn't get to see Tig leader out there is that something you have to consider uh you know is does it look like they're moving on from Ty because we didn't see him out there on uh, on any kicks or any punts uh, uh we're waiting to connect with uh somebody in the locker room i believe it's going to be Lawrence Woods and uh w before we we're going to get to him but we got two great guys who just watched the same game we did uh to the left and the right of us as RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker join us on our Tiger Cats post game roundtable and RJ, we'll start with you. Just your assessment on what we saw. It's hard to judge a preseason game. First of all, kudos because you probably <laughs> said a few guys. I was about to say you probably had to say about a hundred different players' names uh, tonight. Yeah, great so, call. Uh, great what, call, both. Great either. call. Exactly. What uh, What'd you see tonight, RJ? Yeah, two number thirty twos for the Argos. <laughs> one on offense, one on defense. So that's always a challenge. <laughs> uh, no, it was good, and I expected this. I, I talked to Coach O at, at training camp, and he mentioned that probably a lot of the guys who are cemented into positions aren't going to play a lot, if at all. So it was a good chance for guys to, to make their name. I, we're going to talk to Lawrence Woods. Andy said it. That was the, the big play of the game. They really didn't have a lot of offense going in the, in the first half. Jamie Newman, I didn't know when he was going to throw a pass, finally did, <laughs> and it was beautiful hooking up with Anthony Johnson. So, you know, some, those are tough decisions. Because the receiving core is pretty much set. We didn't see any of the starters tonight. Defense, when the starters were out there, you just can't run against the Tiger Cats. No. It, it, you can pretty much take that uh, away. Without so Micah it, Johnson, too, by the that's way, tonight. Right. Yes. Yeah, good point. But Ted Laurent is not bad in that spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a good backup. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I like the, the Tiger Cats. The, the score in this game doesn't, doesn't uh, show what's, what's ahead for the Tiger Cats. They're, they're a veteran group. And when you look to last year, because of the, the COVID year, there were so many really rookies last yes. year. And yeah. so there will be some changes, not a ton, but way fewer rookies on the team. So a lot of guys got that valuable experience. And Luke, that was a recurring theme last year with O where, you know, when he would talk about 
you know, a, a performance or a guy that we saw for the first time, he always went back to, well, there was no preseason game. The preseason's not for starters, and it's not even for week one. Preseason is comes down to, okay, who can help you week six, week 12, week 18? I agree, and tonight it uh, you don't get us it's not the tie cats that we're going to see in a week it's not the tie cats we're going to see going into the regular season but if you want to be critical about tonight there there is maybe some spots where where our depth the tie cats depth isn't where you'd want it to be there's some i mean andy when we're as i'm seeing so many young receivers out there there's you know running and not having late hands there's <laughs> so it's windy. I, you guys mentioned that. It's windy. But Luke's hands. That was, that yeah, was quick. He that was late hands right there. I script. snatched that script <laughs> right out of the wind. But you just see you just see some 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 timing that's not quite right with young receivers and young quarterbacks. And uh and uh and so you know we're gonna you're gonna have to work on that because for the CFL season and now we have a full 18 game spread here receivers court but you're gonna need depth at all of these positions and so that's you know now you work into these uh, those young guys still have time to develop on the practice field in the season those who are, who are going to be able to stick around we had four starters uh, in the receiving core not dressed up tonight plus you have Tyler Tanowski Lamar Durant uh, on the sideline with injury right now so that, that though getting Getting those two back will, will certainly help that depth, and you got to think that you know there'll be one or a few, one to a few of these guys will end up being on the team, whether it be practice roster or active. Um, probably, you know, Anthony Johnson really made a case for himself in both games and yeah. in training camp, so he's he's one to watch out for. Yeah, we've seen Boston make some great plays. We've seen Butler make great plays at training camp too. I mean, there's guys who are there's tough decisions to be made and there was only so many spots on the football field and that goes for the secondary too. Uh, RJ and uh, we've seen some guys uh, make an impact and we've seen some starters kind of get burned out there. Yeah, it it has been interesting. The, even against Montreal, there were a lot of passing yards. They didn't turn them into points, but they did move the ball pretty effectively passing. It's the Cariel Brooks injury will will hurt, of course, tied for the interception lead last year. So hopefully he's not out for too long. And then Alden Darby, he got hurt tonight and went straight off the field. I thought, oh, boy, that, that's not good. But he did come back. So he's dancing I on the sidelines. I think he got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Simone crushed that guy into his stomach. <laughs> so I, I could see it happen right away. I know that feeling. It's like, oh. I, I was talking to him. <laughs> I was talking to someone with the Ticats organization just uh, at the end there, and uh, I think the, the the one great takeaway they took from this, no injuries, no right. serious mm. injuries last yeah. week. Uh, you know, they, they've stayed healthy, and that's a huge part of – that is a huge part of training camp is just staying healthy and getting out of it. And, uh, yeah, let's uh, continue Tiger Cats post game as uh, we go down to the locker room and connect with Jamie Newman. This exclusive post game interview presented by Access Storage. Uh, Jamie, you got out there. You actually got a completion. Uh, you, you made the big play in last week's game, but you got uh, a great game out there today. Just your overall assessment with the way you played tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm just, first off, I would like to just, you know, thank the Tiger Cats organizations for just giving me an opportunity to come out here and compete. It's almost been two and a half years since I been on the field so it's just great getting back out there that's what i want to thank them first and uh, i think it was just good to get back into the swing of things you know first off the o-line did a great job when i got in there they protected me um all my receivers they did a good job on alignment assignment and uh, we just out there playing good ball i can't thank those guys enough for making it easy on me jamie you said it two and a half years with uh, your wild ride from wake uh to to georgia and uh in and I guess it didn't really work out there, but I could see the excitement on your on your uh, face there, that little celebration after that the bomb to Anthony Johnson. Um, did, how do you how do you how are you enjoying the CFL and, and getting your first, you know, straining some uh, completions together and and really controlling the offense for an entire half? How did you feel out there in the CFL? Oh man, it's, uh, it felt great. Um, you know, once again, this is a first class organization with the Tie Cats, so. Uh, my OC, Tommy Condell, he's been done a great job of just, you know, just believing in me um, and still in great foundation. And we always say foundation before the function. So um, it felt great, you know, just getting back out there. It felt like a normal, a normal, almost like a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, Dane Evans, obviously a, a, a leader. We've heard that a lot the last few weeks. What have you taken from him and uh, what are you hoping to learn from him moving forward? Oh, man, he's a first-class leader um, from the day I stepped up here on the 12th. 
Uh, he's been taking me under his wing, you know, just insta instilling some of the things that he learned early in his rookie years. Um, you know, just being behind the quarterback, even when I'm not getting my reps, going through my reads, going through my drops. He's given all the information that he can give to us, those young guys, and I really appreciate him for that. I'm excited to watch him work. He's a great leader. He's not only a great leader in the QB room, but he's a great leader for this whole team and this whole organization. I'm excited to watch him work. Jamie, what uh, what rule in the CFL <laughs> is the most strange to you or, or initially came off as the most strange to you? Uh, being able to kick it and advance it after getting the punt return. So uh, we've seen a couple clips where guys, you know, were able to uh, – after they got the punt return, they were able to kick it and advance it, and, and then all the guys behind him still on side, eligible to go get the ball. So that was, a, you know, probably the craziest thing I've seen in the CFL. Uh, yet to see it in the game, just seeing it on film, and it was kind of wacky. Well, stick around, Jamie. You might uh, see some some more stuff. Uh, congratulations on a great game, a great camp, and I hope to get to talk to you very soon. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. That is Jamie Newman, an exclusive post-game interview presented by Access Storage. And now time to name our performer of the game. And, uh, you know, when there's a situation where guys only play a quarter, guys only play a half, it's difficult. Uh, but today, uh, our guy I, made it pretty easy for yeah, us. Yeah, I think our performer of the game was worthy in a, an entire game. He had six tackles and a massive 99-yard punt return for a touchdown. Lawrence Woods. Uh, what a performance. He was out there. He was laying the wood. He was physical. Uh, and, and, of course, that, that big play is what really kept the Ticats in the game uh, for the entire game. So uh, great game, Lawrence, and congratulations. Lawrence Wood, our performer of the game, presented by Hercules Tire, ride on our strength. RJ, you got to love calling a punt return touchdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been lucky enough to call a few in the two years, but that, uh, you know, a new player for the Tiger Cats. You don't know what to expect. In in preseason, he got an opportunity and, and made it happen. And it was interesting how it started out because he was running into his blockers ahead of him and then finally was able to get to the outside and showed what he can do. And you mentioned his six tackles, Andy. That's 11 tackles in two games and a punt return touchdown. He's a pretty valuable guy. I have a hunch we'll probably see Lawrence Woods in that first game against Saskatchewan. Well, one thing you might... Luke, maybe you, maybe you noticed this. Uh, one of my favorite parts to watch is the kickoff and the, what we call the flying 40s, you know, to see when, when they get the running start yeah. and, and all, uh, well, except for the kicker, 11 players are running down the field at full speed. Like, who's down the fastest? And tonight I saw twice where Lawrence Woods was, must have been 10 yards ahead of everyone else. He is fast. Yeah, he absolutely. He is fast. And that's the determination you want on a special teams unit. You know, you want to be flying down there and, and – be the one to initiate contact. Yeah, we always. I've all of Jeff Reinbold's isms are stuck into my brain forever. <laughs> but one of them is you don't run fast, you run really fast. Except Jeff didn't use the word really when he said that. And so, <laughs> really freaking fast. You, you nailed it. And I and and Craig Butler is uh, is built to be a special teams coordinator, and you can bet he's going to point that out. The guys who do that well, and he's going to point out a guy who's searching too much while he runs down the field and doesn't act like his hair is on fire while he's trying to chase the kick down and so that's another way for these young guys to get on there you forget about that I mean uh, they have to they have to to suit up and and get ready for six different special teams uh units out there from the field goal kickoff and punt teams return return and coverage so a lot of the guys are going to stick around in that way as well final thoughts here from Guelph boys let's start with you RJ um what are you most excited for for when the games start for real just seeing the full team, yeah. full team together, uh, been at camp The, you know, they've the majority of guys have had some time together. So just to because you look back to last year, those first two games, they were like preseason games and it was kind of disappointing. Nobody was really on the same page. I think we're going to see a better start for the Tiger Cats. Luke, what are you most excited to see to come week one on June 11th? Uh, just excited to see some polished play from the vets who we've been watching for years. The guys, the guys who are the established tie cats, and not to say that we didn't see some good things from young guys tonight, but I want to see Dane Evans. I want to see an efficient uh, tie cat offense out there. You did see glimpses of really good special teams play, but of course we can point out sometimes in both games where there was a real uh, 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 lacking in. Um, execution in a very crucial moment of that special teams play. So 
uh, re ready to see a polished Hamilton Tie Cats team. Andy? I want to see the cohesiveness and the energy, uh, kind of echoing what both you guys said, but when, when the team comes together and they're, they're making plays next Saturday in Saskatchewan, whether it be offense, defense, or special teams, and the entire sideline's going crazy and, uh, and just dropping the hammer down. Can't wait. I'm excited to see what you guys do without me uh, come week one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know last Don't week get emotional I, I'm not again, getting emotional week. again, um, <laughs> but I'm glad I got to be a part of this little bit of uh, history here tonight as we took it on the road for the, uh, the first time. It was cold, especially uh, in, uh, in the fourth quarter there once the wind picked mm. up. But, uh, uh, RJ, I did not forget you <laughs> yesterday, uh, but thank you guys for doing this. Thanks, Michael Steyer. Thanks, David Bucko. Thanks, Peter McEwen. Thank On behalf you, of all of us on uh, the Tie Cats Audio Network, you're welcome, RJ. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done, Louis. I'm Louis B. Have a great night.